Hello guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'll be teaching you how to create a really clean YouTube thumbnail. This is personally the style I use for my thumbnail so I thought I'd show you guys how to do it. Before I get started, if we hit 500 likes on this video, I'll be giving away the template to the thumbnail. So make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you want that and let's just get into it. So the first thing you wanna do is press file new and then your project settings will open up and you wanna type in 920 as the width and height as 1080. This is the resolution of a thumbnail. So make sure it is pixels and make sure the background contents are transparent. And then once you're done, press create. So the first thing you wanna do is find a background image. 99% of the time I'll go on unsplash.com. This is not sponsored or anything. I just like using this website because there's a lot of photographers that post their images on here and it's royalty free. You don't even have to give credit to the photographers or anything. You can just use it for commercial and personal use. So that's great. So you want to search up something that's relatable to the video. So I'm just going to search up tech because most of my videos are about tech. I'm going to download this right here and I'm going to place that image. So the two ways to place an image is the first one is just dragging it onto here, but some versions of Photoshop don't allow that. Some versions of Photoshop will only allow you to press file then place embedded. It won't allow you to just drag in the picture, which kind of sucks to be honest, because that's a lot more convenient, but whatever. Now you want to rasterize this layer if it isn't already. Now let's just fill in the canvas. So press control T, hold shift and drag to keep the aspect ratio and transform. And so there we have our image in the background. Now what I'm going to do next is make it black and white. And depending on if you like maximum black, maximum white, or just the normal default, you can choose. I'm going to do maximum black. So I'm going to hold control while clicking on this layer to highlight and press control E to merge these layers. So there I have my background image. Now it's really simple. All I want to do is add the color. So I recommend using three colors that are kind of similar in like shades. So like purple, blue, and pink. So let me just do that right now. You want to make a new layer and you want to go in your brush settings and you want to make sure the hardness is zero and the size is around, uh, I'd say like 1,500, 1,800 works too. Now you want to go to color and you want to select those colors. I'm going to start with like pink and I'm just going to put in the corner here and resize it. And I want to make sure each of the three colors matches up equally. Like it takes up equal space. So there I have pink. I'm going to make another layer and I'm going to make this one, maybe like purple. And the last one's gonna be blue, maybe a lighter blue, like this blue, so you can actually see the difference. Actually, no, this is good. So let me just actually move the purple down here and just like flip it. So maybe something like that would work. That looks better because now they're on opposite sides. And the next thing I do is simply Go on white now, make a new layer and just put some white at the top. So there's some uh, sort of light source and I'll add a vignette. So I'll make the sides a little bit darker. So I'll just do this. And then I'll lower the opacity a bit. And so there I have the basis of it. And by the way, I add the text last. So in case you guys were wondering why I haven't added that yet, it's because I added it at the very end. The next thing you want to do is go to curves. You want to pull this down and pull this upward leftward and you can see the blacks are kind of dominating there so I'm gonna just like lay off of that a bit by lowering the opacity so there I have a really nice you know color and now I want to go to color balance and I just want to see what I like better so like I might like this better where there's not a lot of pink shown or I want to maybe bring in green so let me just decide here I can do it like this even add red so let me just leave it like that so you can see the difference between this. It's a little bit darker and it has more red in it. The next thing I'll do is go into hue and saturation and decide if I still like this color scheme or if there's others that I like better. So something like that. And you can see like the black is taking up a lot of space here. Or I believe that's just the image. So let me just resize the image so it's a little bit bigger because most of it is black. Let's find a new image because I don't think there's a lot happening in this image. So uh, maybe like this image would be better. So I'm going to add a new image because that didn't work out so well because it didn't have a lot in it. So it didn't really look that good. So like maybe this. Yeah, I think that looks better. And let's make this up here. Now I'm going to make a new layer under here, make it black. So alt backspace to uh, fill it in. Or if you want to make it like blue, fill it in, just alt backspace. And then I'm going to lower the opacity of this. 
and it seems like this doesn't really fit with this this green part because it just kind of i don't know it forces itself in it's like very i don't know it doesn't fit well so if i just move it down a little bit you can see it kind of fades off and it it, it, it kind of fades in better now and maybe i can even change this type of green because I, I don't really like this type of green so maybe like a different shaded green would be better and by the way i just press hue and saturation and I press this, which applies the hue and saturation to only the layer that's under it. So there I have the colors and I could still like maybe decrease this a bit. And now maybe do curves again, cause it isn't so bright. Something like that. Now the last thing I'll do is add the text. So I usually use only one font and that's Gotham Bold. I use this because it's the best in all situations. It's very clean, it's bold. I don't know, it just it's the perfect font. Besides this font, the other font that I will use is Next Light and Bolt. I'll leave both in the description if you guys want to download that. But here I'm going to just maybe type in Apple Watch. Yeah, Apple Watch. And then center it, press Control A, press the Move tool, and then press the second and fifth shortcut. Or you can press Control A, Layer, Align Layers to Selection vertical centers and horizontal centers if that's easier for you and another thing i do is always add a subtitle because i want small details that people can't really see but it kind of adds to the whole thumbnail that way because it fills up more space so the next thing i'll do is like review and unboxing and now i want to press Control t hold shift and drag and then make it smaller and usually when I have smaller text, what I'll do is I'll highlight it, press control T, and then I'll change the vertical alignment. So there it is. So then I'll move it like right there and I'll center it right here. And that's a little bit too big. Even though people might not be able to see it, I still think it's a good addition. It fills up space and it kind of fits with the thumbnail. Maybe like up here is better. And the last thing I'll do is make a new layer and kind of overlay some whites on the thumbnail to make it brighter. So I'll make this overlay. So set the blend mode as overlay here. And wherever there's some sort of significance, I'll add white. So select white and select your brush and make the brush around 400. So I'll select this Apple Watch right here. So click there, where it says Mac Pro, uh, where it says Mac Pro, MacBook Pro. Uh, maybe there, maybe part of the title as well, like there. And yeah, so you can see the difference between this and this, it kind of pops out and then I'll always go back to hue and saturation because I can never decide what color I like the best. But like this, this is amazing. Like this is amazing. Like all these gradients are amazing. And that's why I like this whole theme because there's always such bright colors in it. I used it in a lot of my past thumbnails and I've always tried to find a balance, but I never was able to. I always wanted to find a balance between the thumbnails that filmmakers make where it's like text and it's really simple. And the ones that I used to make where they're really abstract and really cool and epic, you know? And I think I found the balance because it's really colorful. It looks nice, you know, it's, it's the best of both worlds. I really recommend this sort of style to any technology YouTubers just because it's really simple, kind of fits the theme, hopefully helped you out. It's a really short video, but it looks really good as you can tell. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. My name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.